Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to do a scheduled export of an Airtable uh, table uh, using EasyCSV. We can, we'll get this set up in a couple minutes. So let's start an Airtable. So I have this Airtable um, grid view here. And let's say every day I want to send someone a CSV file of this, or, you know, I want to upload it to FTP, or I want to put it on Dropbox, or, you know, I just want to make a CSV or XLSX file and send it somewhere. So in this example, we're going to email it to somebody. And so what you're first going to do is go to the table of data you want to set up your scheduled exports for. And you're going to click on next to the view name, and you can download the CSV. And which, what that is is you're just going to get basically the first version of this to help you set up an easy CSV. So you see I have the file down here. This is just some stupid dummy data. You'll see it has a linked column here, which is nice. So like in, in the back end of Airtable, this is actually an ID, but... We're going to export it as just that text, which is nice, and you know everything else um, works as expected. So I've downloaded that CSV here. We go over to Easy CSV and we click Make a New Import Page Import Flow, and we'll use this CSV. We'll drag it here, and this just helps us set up our import page and flow. And so you'll see it has all the columns here. If there's columns you don't care about, uncheck them if you want, especially if you have a ton of columns. Um, what that'll do is it'll keep it out of the final CSV you don't want, but you know make sure you keep everything that. You want to use. So we're just going to call this one your table daily export. Right, you can name this. Maybe you have a, a couple different flows. So I go next. You can send, you know, the data actually anywhere. You can send the data to Postgres. You can send it to a son. You know, you could do anything you want with these rows of data. Um, in general, emailing will send a CSV file, uploading the S3, Google Drive. Dropbox, you can send the file to Zapier as like a whole file, or you can send it as you know data from each row. Um, we're gonna email the new file, and then you get this import page where you could drag this file and import it, but we're gonna set up something else. So let's first enter our destination email. I'm gonna put in my email. You can add other emails, you can do subject line body, you can specify the file name, you get this default one by um, you know for free, so let's save that. So right now this would work. If I drag that CSV of Airtable here, it would send me an email of basically the same CSV. It'll parse the data and then make a new CSV and send it to me. Um, let's go to our import flow here. This top is how easy CSV can get the um, data. We're going to set up a scheduled fetcher for Airtable in a second. The middle is, you know, these are the columns you've told easy CSV, easy CSV to care about. You can filter out data, for, like maybe there's a totals row you don't want, or you don't want rows that have the brand Nike in it, like you could do that. You can combine or massage data here with virtual fields. You can make new columns. You can rename the columns into like a different format. So let's say you want to keep your Airtable the way you want, but then you want to send it to your client or your customer or something with different column names. You can make new columns here with the data from Airtable. And then this is just all the um, info of the destination. So we can either go here and set up our schedule fetcher, or you can go to your page and click schedule fetcher up here. And we're going to say, you know, every 24 hours, every day of the week, go to Airtable and fetch my table. So you have to enter in three things for the Airtable API. You have to enter in your auth token so that Easy CSV, you give Easy CSV something to get the data with. Um, you know, it has a nice link here to go get your thing. I'm not going to show how to do that. And then you want to get your Airtable base ID and your Airtable name. So if you click on this link, you know, just follow these steps here and you'll get you'll get through all this. Airtable gives you an API for every one of your um, tables. We'll go to this plain table and we'll go down to the table I want to get. If you click on any of these, you'll kind of see the URL here. And this is the app ID, so you know, you'll copy that. You can also go up here and get the, the base ID. All of these are, are in these steps if you just follow that. So then, you know, you want to make sure you get the right table. So you can just copy the table name from here. You can also copy it from here, but make sure, you know, you know what you're, you're doing because after the question mark are um, URL params. So I like to copy it from here, put it here, and get my, my auth token. So I put, in, I put in all this info. You can test it. You know, you'll get a success if it's right. And then Airtable, when you pull all the data from a table, it requires two things. One, you have to tell it what time zone you want. So if something's a date time in Airtable, you know, it, it could be any time zone. So like you pick the time zone you want those dates to be, 
These are all the time zones supported by Airtable. And then Airtable locale, basically what language is your data in. In my case, it's in English. You know, you can choose any of these locales. So like, you know, if it's Spanish, yes. If it's German, DE. So let's save that. Cool. So now you have this fetcher and it's on. So every day it's going to go fetch that grid of data. It's going to then send it into the import flow, go through this, and then send a CSV file. And so what you could do is um, you could immediately edit it and turn it off if you're just doing some testing. Um, and then you could click force fetch. I would recommend putting your own email in. Don't put in your customer or client email first. If you're doing that, I'd put in your own email and then force fetch. And you'll see that that gets queued up. So like, you know, you should give it, you know, maybe a minute or two and you'll see once it does that, you can refresh this page. You'll get a log of it being fetched. If there's an error, it'll say there's an error. And then it sends it into your import flow. So then you'll go to your import page. You'll see there's a log down here and it tells you like how many rows are imported every day. And it'll just, this is kind of like the log of the import flow. You can also go up to logs here and see that. In our case, it this is the email it would have sent to me with an attached CSV file. Let's take a look at that. Cool. And you'll see that it has all the data from um, Airtable in it, including the text from the linked columns. Um, so it's not like the IDs or JSON values, it's like the actual text. So, you know, in a couple minutes, you have a scheduled export of your um, Airtable table where you can send it to anywhere you want. You can send it to um, email, Dropbox, Drive, whatever you want. You can, it'll also, like, if you want to make things somewhere else, like if you just want to always push the data into Postgres, it could push it row by row, whatever you want. But in our case, we just made a new file. If you have any questions, please um, chat Easy CSV support on our website. We always get back to everybody. Um, you can also email uh, support at easycsv.io and we help everyone we can. Thanks.